День добрый, леди и джентльмены. Традиционно первый вступает в эти часы с двух до трех по четвергам на нашем радио Таня Родос. Но Таня сегодня в отлучке. Меня зовут Сио Каплан. И паранормальная, в котором обычно пара нормальная, сегодня будет в моем лице представлена в этой передаче. Но зато у меня такие гости, которых никогда не было. И я надеюсь, что еще будут. Часть передачи мне придется вести по-английски, потому что моя гостья говорит по-английски, по-французски, а по-русски пока еще нет. Так что, если кто захочет, вы можете примкнуть а, по ходу а, к моему интервью, потому что м, я начну просто с двух слов, что моя гостья — это ответственный представитель а, княжества Монако. Зовут ее Синди Харрисон, и она а, является очень длинной у нее должность. Она практически а, человек, который от Монако отвечает за туризм в рамках этого княжества. Причем она отвечает за туризм как из Соединенных Штатов, так и из Канады. Мы давно готовились к этой встрече, и сейчас в Канаде празднуется 150-я годовщина э, культурных связей, которые были налажены между княжеством Монако когда-то и Россией. Это было еще во времена, как вы понимаете, далеко до э, той революции, которая, так сказать, уничтожила последнего царя. Э, в княжестве Монако э, в Князь, верховный его правитель, это формальная власть, так сказать, принц Альберт II, Альберт II. Вот, и в этом году 150 лет, как невероятная просто годовщина, о чем я просто понятия имел. Поэтому интервью я буду вести по-английски, вы можете помогать мне, подключаясь с вашими вопросами, имея в виду ваши интересы в Монако, в частности, потому что Монако — это и горные дома, это туризм, в Монако сейчас проходит один из самых крупнейших теннисных турниров. Вот сегодня, по-моему, Надал играл. Но я сам играл в теннис, поэтому я не могу посмотреть. Но точно Монако – это один из самых интересных турниров. Там э, изумительная природа, и народ туда ездит отдыхать. То есть, короче, если у вас есть вопросы по поводу того, как бы провести ваше время, ваши отпуска, или слетать, может быть, на выходные в Монако, то сегодня в студии сидит тот человек, с которым можно про это пообщаться. Uh, hi, Cindy. I just made a short introduction of who you are, what you do for a living, and what this year uh, means to you, I mean to Monaco and Russia. And since we are all here, understand some Russian, not all of our audience is fluent in Russian, by the way, but most of them are fluent in English. So well, don't hesitate to speak your mother tongue. By the way, I know that you speak French as well, right? Yes, but I do speak French. Uh-huh. And you have a bachelor's degree in uh, French literature. I do. Uh -huh. So how come you ended up uh, with the tourism in the United States and Canada? But, well, in Canada they speak French, right? And Canada is a bilingual country. Anyway, it was a funny story. 26 years now I'm with the Monaco Government Tourist Office. And I responded to a blind ad back in 1988 when people still were reading magazines and looking for jobs. Really? Well, and what here does I am, mean? 26 what years are, later. What is a blind ad? It wasn't identified that the position was for a job with the Monaco Government Tourist Office. Uh -huh. All the ad indicated, it said, uh, knowledge of tourism, knowledge of French helpful. I sent in a resume, and here I am 26 years later. It's been a great journey. Uh, obviously, you spoke Russian in those days. Uh, did you have any experience in tourism, as a, I mean, in management of tourism? I had been in the tourism sector for a good number of years before that and had organized uh, some uh, meetings and incentive travel programs in the principality. But when I responded to the ad, I had no idea to what I was responding. Uh, could you please describe to our people, who, to our audience, What Monaco is, all the majority knows who has never been to Monaco is that it's a very, very small country, very independent. Uh, it's maybe way less in size than New Jersey or even less in size than Brooklyn, yeah? So what's the square footage and um, what kind of nature is there out there? And um, the most attractive points in terms of, your, your, in terms of t tourism? Well, if you blink, you've arrived in Monaco and you've left Monaco. So the Principality of Monaco is the second smallest independent state in the world after the Vatican, although many people think it's much larger. So Vatican is small, right? It is very small. And for people here in New York, you have a reference, Central Park. Monaco is smaller than New York's Central Park. So everybody knows everybody. Um, be careful. <laughs> 
Yes, it's a very, very special place. And I know that many people, certain images are conjured up. Even if people don't know a lot about Monaco, they think about James Bond. They think about royalty. They think about the iconic Grand Prix and motor racing in the Principality of Monaco. But there are many hidden gems to be discovered. We have a very rich events calendar during the course of the year. In fact, we were chatting earlier. And right now, the Monte Carlo Rolex Tennis Master is going on. And here you see great players like Nadal and Djokovic compete on the clay courts. But one of the great things that goes on in Monaco is that you experience everything much closer, more intimately. Here in New York City, you go to the Tennis Open and you're so far from the players. In Monaco, you're so close with a view of the Mediterranean behind you. And a short distance away, you might even see the prince and princess in their box. So whether it's the Tennis Open or whether you go to an opera, our famed Garnier Room, it seats 500 people. So you're that much closer to the stage. So you experience everything on a very intimate basis. What is the high season for tourism in Monaco? The high season today has probably become the summer months, but there really isn't a bad period to visit the Principality of Monaco because we have something going on all the time. What many people don't realize is that today we've become primarily a summer resort, but at the turn of the last century, we were really a winter resort when all the Northern Europeans, the English, the Russians, were tired of the gray skies of Northern Europe and they wanted to browse in the sunlight. And so they used to come during the winter months down to the Principality of Monaco and to the Riviera. Uh, are there any seasonal changes in weather and climate in Monaco? I would liken the weather to be very similar to that of Southern California. So we have a microclimate. It's like a paradise. It is paradise. It, it truly is. We say that we experience over 300 days of sun, although I can't promise it. One of our hotel companies had a promotional umbrella that says it never rains in Monte Carlo. <laughs> I can't guarantee that, but yes, we have very optimal weather. Really? It never rains? Oh, it's a figure of speech. Uh, I tend to say it's more a figure of speech, but the, it has fabulous weather. Mm -hmm. You mentioned that the prince and the family can be seen on that uh, tournaments um, in the uh, in their uh, private VIP lounge kind of uh, separate place. Can you approach a prince? How democratic uh, is principality in this respect? Because if, uh, for instance, our president is campaigning somewhere and you happen to be in a pizza joint at the time he's in there, you have a chance to talk to him. Uh, or is there a security? You can never approach the, uh, the, the prince. I'm sure there's security, especially when they're traveling overseas. But uh, the prince and princess are very approachable. You might see them dining in restaurants. And um, he drives his own car. So that's quite different from oh, really? the U.S. Mm -hmm from a U.S. president, and at numerous events, you can see members of the princely family. No and, security detail, no? Uh, n not very visible. Okay. And uh, recently, we were very proud to have royal twins. And so the christening of the new twins will be very shortly. Mm -hmm. Oh, speaking of christening the twins, uh, uh, what kind of... Con con religious um, confessions do we have in Monaco, for instance? Do we have any Russian Orthodox Church or a Jewish synagogue? The state religion in the Principality of Monaco is Catholicism. Um, although all religions are embraced, there is a small Jewish community and there is a synagogue in the Principality of Monaco. In nearby Nice, which is a larger town on the Riviera, there is a very, very impressive Russian church, the Alexander Nevsky Cathedral, because the Russian family used to, when they were coming down to the Riviera, some people tell me, although I'm not certain about this, is that there were some members of the Tsar's family who were tubercular, and they could have gone to Odessa for good weather, but they didn't want people to know that their health wasn't up to par. So they started coming down to the Riviera, and consequently, there's this jewel of a Russian church in the city of Nice.
Uh-huh. You have many tourists from Russia. I, I know that for a fact. But how about the United States? The top key markets in terms of nationality in the Principality of Monaco are Italians who are just next door. People could drive from Milan in just three hours. The French. And By all- railroad. By rail, uh, mm-hmm. flights from Paris are about an hour, but one of the top markets is the North American market. So Americans and Canadians are amongst our top visitors, and today Russians have become they Russians have returned to the Riviera in big numbers. Uh, this year means a lot to Monaco because it's uh, the 150th anniversary of the cultural bridge, which was built so many years ago between the great Russia when the Tsars were at power and Monaco, which remains the principality since uh, how long, uh, how many years? Well, Monaco as a principality is more than 700 years. 700. But the creation of Monte Carlo is just over 150 years. And it was the creation of Monte Carlo. It was at this time with the building of the casino in 1863 that much of the Russian aristocracy started becoming top clients. Okay, so uh, the, the year of uh, this cultural bridge be- between those uh, uh, the Tsar and the, prin- the Prince of the Times means that you have to have a very extensive cultural agenda. You cannot you know, squeeze it into one weekend. Uh, what is the most significant events you expect to happen in Monaco during this year? Well, 2015 has been designated as the year of Russia in Monaco with over 140-something events going on during the course of the year. And we are celebrating historical and cultural ties because it was in the 19th century that Prince Charles III and Tsar Alexander II, they signed various treaties together. But during the course of this year, we have uh, for the Grand Prix, which is our most famous motor race, which is just coming up, Uh, The Red Army Choir is going to be performing at the Grand Prix Gala Dinner. I'm sorry, whose idea was it? The Red Army Choir? I'm sure that there was a whole committee that helped put together the program a couple of months ago. I guess it was in the end of February. We had a Maslinitsa down in the harbor area. Um, Excuse me, I have to interrupt you for a second. The Red Army Choir is the funniest thing in the world because they used to sing, you know, the party hymns and at all times before the Soviet Union um, got dissipated into smaller countries. Now they can sing John Lennon's song, Paul McCartney. Uh, they sing some funny s- songs, still look in the same way they used to in their uniform. They are like a mil- military choir. It's, it's like 150 people, but it's a completely different repertoire. Interesting. So you're I'll, lucky. You're lucky to have them. I'll have to get a recording because I've never had the privilege of hearing them before. One of the big, big events for this year mm-hmm. is from July 12 to September 6. We are going to have a major exhibition at the Grimaldi Forum Monaco, which is our cultural and convention center. The exhibit is entitled From Chagall to Malevich. The Revolution of the Avant-Garde. And the paintings displayed will be from artists during the period of 1905 to 1930. And so this major exhibit will go on for the whole summer season. Uh, July 19, we have something really quite wonderful which goes on in the Principality. In the summer, there are Philharmonic concerts which take place in the palace courtyard. People get dressed elegantly, but the kickoff of the season of the Philharmonic, Valerie Gergev will be conducting a concert on July 19th. That's a big event. Valerie it is a big event. G- G- Gergev con- is considered one of the most renowned uh, conductors of modern times, I mean, coming from Russia. I, I know that um, Sergei Diaghilev, the famous a uh, ballet master used to perform a lot in Monaco. He liked it. He had his um, troupe perform there for many, many years, up until the late 20s, I guess. Uh, what, Absolutely. Can you tell us about it? Actually, until 1929. So, Sergei Diaghilev's Ballet Russe performed and resided in Monaco from 1911 
until Diaghilev's death in 1929. And he immensely influenced ballet and the related arts. All kinds of well-known, also conductors, performed Stravinsky's pieces. And Monica was really cutting edge. They were leaders in the cultural arts. The company disappeared completely in 1951. But it was the dream of Princess Grace to once again have a ballet company. She didn't live to see that. Um, but under Her Royal Highness Princess Caroline, we once again have a ballet company which was inspired by the Ballet Russe, and it's called the Ballet de Monte Carlo, and they are the official ballet company of the Principality, and in fact, they will be in New York next year. Mm-hmm. And um, does the Bolshoi Theater ever um, perform in Monaco, and do you expect them this coming year? Well, the year of Russia kicked off with a very special performance of the Bolshoi. And what was unique is that there was a collaboration with the creative director of the Ballet de Monte Carlo. So he choreographed, and the ballet was performed by the Bolshoi. Mm -hmm. And that was in January. It's beautiful. In the open air? No, it was still just a tad chilly, so it Uh was at our cultural center. Uh, What is the criminal stats in the Principality? Criminal stats? Yeah, the criminal statistics. Do people commit crimes in such a paradise? Well, in all these years, I haven't been privileged. Nobody's given me a diamond tiara. I'm still <laughs> waiting for it. But uh, as a female, a single female, I could walk through a park at three, four in the morning and absolutely nothing. You're a teaser. I mean, you, I you, tell the, you, you tease criminally inclined people who might, you know. I'm inspiring them, right? You, uh, you're inspiring, of course. You know, when the crimes happen in the Central Park here, I understand that people who consider the Central Park their headquarters, their, their living quarters, uh, they see young women intervening their bushes, you know, and they, they are outraged. And uh, for some reason, we are still looking at it as a crime. I, I'm, I'm kidding. But um, uh, you, like, you like challenges, Cindy, right? Many people seek out Monaco because of the high levels of security. We do have a prison, but I think it's fairly empty, but extraordinary. <laughs> the rooms have views of the Mediterranean. Could be used as a hotel in the high season. Maybe one day it will. Um, what is the, the approximately? Is there any ratio between the pri- hotel prices off season and high season? For instance, when you have formal event on, how high do the prices go up? I would say during the season the rates are probably about thirty percent more. One of the challenges of Monaco and the Principality of Monaco is that people see it as lifestyles of the rich and famous. But I think that people would be very surprised that it's more approachable than many people think. Top hotels in major cities such as New York, London, Paris, could be more expensive even than in the Principality of Monaco. Mm -hmm. But the caliber of service and the attentiveness to the needs of the individual are absolutely outstanding, and I'm proud to be part of that. Mm, how many schools do you have in the principality? For those who, for some reason, would decide to immigrate to Monaco and uh, with the kids, you know, they have to go to school. Is there any schools for the kids? Of course there are schools for the kids, and people make uh, decisions. There's also an international school. There's an American school for people who feel that they'll only be there for a limited period of time. Mm-hmm. But you know, uh, being an interviewer for life, I know that no matter how well you are prepared, no matter how pleasant your guest is, you never ask the most important questions. That's why I, I would like, by the end of our conversation, for you to uh, make the short part of our interview. You ask yourself the most important question, which I missed out, and you answer it. Because you know something which I don't. For instance, you, you would like... Uh, for those who listen to us to visit Monaco, right? To spend their vacation time over there. To enjoy the beauty of whatever you told us about. And um, they need, you, you need to come up with some kind of a bait. You know, it's like we're, we're talking fishing here. So what is the most attractive bait in your mind with your experience? You're the, you're the insider. I have to share my hidden gems. Absolutely. Sometimes I would like to keep them for myself. No, not, not actually true. I would encourage anybody who 
visits Monaco to take advantage of its uh, extraordinary situation at the foot of the Southern Alps along the Mediterranean, a stone's throw from Nice, but also to the East Italy. So in a sense, you could be on a cruise ship. You don't have to pack and unpack except staying in Monaco. Your cabin is going to be that much bigger. So Monaco makes an extraordinary base for exploring the French and the Italian Rivieras. One lands at Nice Airport. It's only 14 miles away, so it's a lot easier to get to Monaco than getting from JFK into New York. The best place to go to for a long vacation. You reside in Monaco for the entire period and you make short trips by car. Absolutely, Mm -hmm. because that way you don't have to pack, unpack. You land in Nice and you have a very James Bond experience. (laughs) You take a helicopter from Nice to Monaco. It takes seven minutes and the cost of a helicopter is almost the same as a taxi. We have over, we have many, many Michelin-starred restaurants, so the dining experience is extraordinary. One has events, but also one can browse around local markets like our Condamine Market and mingle with locals and taste all kinds of foods, uh, fish from the Mediterranean, uh, lemons grown nearby. Mm-hmm. Uh, That's one of the hidden gems. We have a new yacht club. Many people don't know. Part of the yacht club is the rowing club. You could go dine in the rowing club and mingle with locals. Oh, by the way, you mentioned Michelin-starred restaurants. Uh, It's the same thing like Zagat rated in New York, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. It's the same concept. Okay. Okay. Cindy, it's been a real pleasure for me to have you here. And um, for those who have been listening to this conversation, it's not our last meeting, and hopefully we'll have a mutually beneficial relationship in the future. We want to thank you immensely for hosting us today, and we look forward to welcoming people to the Principality of Monaco. And should they need more information, our website is visitmonaco.com backslash U.S., but we're always happy to have a conversation. Easy to remember. Visit monaco.com backslash US. All right. Cindy, Thank you. Thanks a lot. День добрый, леди и джентльмены. Традиционно первый вступает в эти часы с двух до трех по четвергам на нашем радио Таня Родос. Но Таня сегодня в отлучке. Меня зовут Сио Каплан. 